NASA STEM Engagement and Educator Professional Development Collaborative logo. Welcome to NASA STEM EPDC Quick Bits Big Ideas in Science Content. NASA STEM Engagement and Educator Professional Development Collaborative provides NASA resources and STEM strategies for STEM engagement. In this series, we intend to reach educators, parents, and caregivers to quickly explain a specific big idea in STEM. We will introduce a NASA example of how this idea is applied in the real world. And finally, we will demonstrate step-by-step -step how to lead this activity at home or in the classroom with your students. You might invite your students to watch with you at that time. We invite you to join us as we learn more from our specialists. Let's get started. Hello there. I'm Dr. Ann Weiss of NASA's Langley Research Center. In this Quick Bits episode, I will present the Looking for Life activity. Your mission is to guide your student as they hunt for signs of life here on Earth, just as NASA scientists hunt for signs of life on other planets. In 2020, the Hubble Space Telescope achieves its 30th year in orbit. Hubble has fundamentally changed our understanding of the cosmos, beaming transformational images back to us. Such as this iconic image of the Pillars of Creation Nebula, a stellar nursery where baby stars are born of cosmic dust and gases, each with their own set of planets that just might support life. As a student yourself, you may have spent quite a few nights in your backyard, marveling at the starry sky above. I know I did. That young student wondered many things as she looked up at that sky, and it is your student's natural curiosity, so fundamental to being human, that you and I will nurture through the following activity. The big idea is how to use the scientific method to answer a question. This all starts with students' power of observation, which they then use to create a model of what it means to be alive versus not alive. In science, when we say model, we don't necessarily mean a physical object like a model airplane or railroad that a student can touch. Scientists also use models to propose possible explanations for how something works in our natural world. And that is how we are going to use the term model here with student scientists. Once we've helped your student scientists develop their proposed model for life, they will then conduct an experiment you have set up for them to collect data that they use to determine if their proposed model is supported or in need of revision and increase their knowledge of what defines something as living or non-living. Before you have your student scientists join us, let's review some other key terms. Scientific questions usually ask for either a description of a phenomenon or a cause for it. A model, like I talked about on the previous slide, is a question's proposed answer. It can also be called hypothesis or theory. Experiments give scientists chances to test their proposed answers, and it's always a great idea to figure out, before doing an experiment, what should happen assuming one's proposed answer or model works. What does one expect to see or hear? Resulting data can be observations or numbers that scientists collect for measurements. And finally, conclusions result from a comparison between expected and actual results. A match means the model is supported, while a mismatch means the model is refuted and in need of revision. While I recommend that you review the rest of the video at least once before having your student scientists join you, I will present the rest of this video as if I'm speaking directly to your students. Hi students, how are you? We here at NASA EPDC are so glad that you have joined us, and we hope that you're excited to show us what a knowledgeable scientist you are. Did you know that the word scientist comes from an old Latin word meaning to know? So today, you get to show us what you know by hunting for signs of life. First, you'll need to help gather all the materials you see on the screen before we can start. The activity materials include objects, living and non-living, an outdoor area to investigate, images of objects, three containers, play sand, sugar, dry yeast, an antacid tablet, and warm tap water. Parents and caregivers, if you can't find play sand, try small pebbles, gravel, or something similar instead. All right, let's start. Students, the big idea for today's STEM activity is to use the scientific method to develop a model of life characteristics that answer the question, 
So what exactly makes something alive or not alive? Your parent or caregiver will help you write down your proposed model before you test it. You might be asking, why should I come up with a model first? Can't I just do the experiment? Well, NASA is getting ready to launch the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover. When Perseverance arrives on Mars, its job will be to hunt for signs of past life. It makes the rover better at its job if NASA scientists can tell Perseverance ahead of time what to look for when it gets there. So if you make a model or list ahead of time, you, like the NASA scientists, are more likely to succeed as you hunt for signs of life in some alien soil samples that your parent or caregiver has brought to you. So how do you create a model that defines life? It is the sign of a great scientist, like you, to have a lab notebook in which you write down ideas for a model, as well as all observations, data, and conclusions from an experiment. You can copy the chart below into your lab notebook, and as you make observations, use this chart to record your thoughts about what makes something alive versus not alive. Now, what can you observe to make your model defining life? Ideally, your parent or caregiver has located an outdoor area for you to investigate. Alternatively, they might have found images or objects inside your home. I've also included some videos from my neighborhood. Feel free to pause this video so you can go and observe. When I went outside, I first sorted objects as being alive or not alive. What objects do you see in this video? Are they alive or not? Hopefully, you see several trees, grass, fences, houses, water, and a bird. I focused on this Canadian goose to ask this question. Why do I think this object is alive? Write down possible answers in your lab notebook as possible characteristics of life. Sometimes living objects hide in plain sight. I'll be honest, I initially missed the blue heron in this clip. Are you able to find it? What does this tell you about possible characteristics of life? Here's a fun one. This clip was another unexpected treat. As I became more aware of my surroundings, I realized that what I had initially classified as non-living were actually living organisms. From the other side of the pond, these bumps on a log, if you will, looked like big rocks. Thank goodness I walked around the pond to satisfy my curiosity. I was totally delighted to discover that these were turtles sunning themselves on this log. Unlike the box turtles that my sister and I were fascinated by as students, these critters wouldn't let me get very close to them. And that's okay. Wildlife should be left to be wild, admired from afar. The point in me telling you this is take your time. Don't rush your observations. Curiosity and patience do pay off in unexpected ways sometimes. Now, NASA's Mars 2020 rover, Perseverance, is not going to land on the red planet to hunt for signs of past life and, voila, have a bird or turtle greet it. So while you may have easily identified life characteristics in previous clips, this clip is a bit of a challenge to you student scientists. Why do you think the objects shown here are alive or not alive? Write down those answers in your lab notebook to include in your model defining life. In this scene, we see an open meadow filled with a variety of short trees, wild grass, and other small plants. While some of the plants are green and upright, others are brown or crushed. In the event that weather is not good, you can observe indoors. To observe indoors for your model of life, I've asked Miss Ninja and Mr. Puck to help me. Uh, well, Miss Ninja's apparently not all that thrilled about helping me. <laughs> Cats. Anyway, students, what you are doing is comparing some living objects in your house, a cat like Miss Ninja, a dog, a gerbil, mice, birds, etc., and some non-living material like my cat statue there on the table. And so in this way, you can still answer the question, why do you think the objects are alive or not alive, and write down your answers in your lab notebook for your model defining life. Okay, students, the moment we've been working so very hard for, an experiment that puts your model definition of life to the test. Astronauts, that's you parents and caregivers, after years of hard work have brought back three soil samples from Mars, and NASA is now asking its scientists, 
that's you students, to analyze them for signs of life. To review, the soil samples you are testing your model of proposed life characteristics on will be prepared using the following materials. Three small containers with airtight lids labeled A, B, and C. A measuring cup that measures in milliliters, 150 milliliters of clean clay sand, 15 milliliters of sugar, and 5 milliliters of yeast. You'll need one fizzing and acid tablet that you will crush into fine powder and a cup filled with warm tap water. You will need your lab notebook again, this time to write down your experiment's results or data. And don't forget to have some paper towels in case of spills. Step one, put 50 milliliters of sand in each one of your containers. Step two, add five milliliters of sugar into each one of your containers. Step three, add five milliliters of yeast to container B. Step four, take one antacid tablet, crush into fine powder, and add to your container C. Stir the contents in each one of the containers and attach the airtight lids so that you can store your three containers overnight. Students, this would be a great time to make predictions about what the sugar, yeast, and antacid powder will do. It's now time to collect the data. Grab your lab notebooks and remove the lids from each one of your samples. Make a new chart with three sections, one for each container. Clearly write down what ingredients are in each container before recording what you see, smell, and feel in these soil samples. Write down as many details as you can. This will help you make conclusions about whether your proposed characteristics are signs of life or not. Once you've finished observing, have your adult add the warm tap water. It should be around 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Stand aside a little so you don't get splashed, but be sure that all of the container's contents are covered with the warm tap water. On a new page in your lab notebook, make another chart labeled Add Water with three sections, one for each container. Record what you saw, smelled, and heard as your adult added the warm tap water. For your final data collection, leave the soil samples for several hours, or if you can, overnight. Make one more chart labeled Final Observations with three sections, one for each container. You will use this last chart to record any changes that may have happened during this time. Was there activity in any of the samples? If so, does that match your proposed model defining life? Now that we've finished our experiment, let's try to understand what the data said about your model definition of life. Remember that these alien soil samples were meant to simulate samples NASA astronauts had brought back from Mars. You proposed a model through observation that attempted to answer the question, so what makes something alive or not? As you look over your model and what happened in each of the three containers, which ones do you think had signs of life? Did these match your predictions? If yes, you can conclude that your model is supported. If no, the data is showing that your model most likely needs to be revised. But like all scientific investigations, one experiment rarely answers a question completely. Perhaps you need additional data or tools beyond what you were given in this activity. What other information would help you add to your knowledge of what it means to be alive or not? After all this time, you're probably curious about comparing your model to other students. Now, I don't have a specific student's model to show you, but what I can do is show you a basic model that a biologist might use, the types of things that they would be looking for as they're hunting for signs of life. First, the object needs to be very complex with a high degree of organization, and this is true regardless of whether it's very small or very large. Second, they'd be looking for some kind of evidence of the object collecting and using energy to grow. This is called metabolism, and that can include food breakdown, like digestion, or food synthesis like we see with plants which make their own food using energy from the sun. A third item that they would look for is, can the object make copies of itself, what we would commonly refer to as reproduction? And finally, they would be looking to see whether or not the object can sense, respond, or adjust to its environment 
in order to regulate itself and maintain its health. This might be as simple as the blue heron earlier in this video grooming its feathers, or the turtles plopping into the water in response to my approach. Today's big idea was to use the scientific method to answer the question, so what exactly makes something alive or not alive? You observed living and non-living matter to propose a model of life characteristics that you then tested in an experiment analyzing three alien soil samples. And just like NASA scientists, you collected actual data, which you compared to your model in order to conclude whether it was supported. Hopefully you had fun doing this activity with your parent or caregiver, and you now know more about what it means to be alive. Who knows? You just might find yourself at NASA one day in the not too distant future, helping to write the next chapter in NASA's hunt for signs of life on other planets. Students who want to know more about astrobiology, the study of life on Earth, in extreme environments and in space, are invited to explore the extensions section on the Looking for Life activity website. Additional resources can be found in the information section below this video. Thanks for watching this NASA STEM EPDC Quick Bit. Don't forget to check out the description below for more information and links. www.txstate-epdc.net Logos for the Texas State University LBJ Institute for STEM Education and Research, NASA STEM Engagement and Educator Professional Development Collaborative, and NASA Partner. The material contained in this document is based upon work supported by a National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, grant or cooperative agreement. Any opinions, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this material are those of the author and do not necessarily reflect the views of NASA. Images and footage courtesy of NASA. Images and footage used under licenses from Shutterstock.com and Envato.